Hey guys. Cassie found something here. It's the size of a nickel. Hey, buffalo nickel, give me the buffalo juice. Oh, I got to keep digging some more here. Let's see what else we can get. I found myself a bucket lister. I got a crotal bell. You it's a weedy. You found a weedy? Yes. Sweet. A Walking Liberty 1943 half dollar. Oh my God, it's freaking gorgeous. You got an Indian? Oh my god, Cassie got IHP. Needless to say, I am a happy camper. Good morning, everybody. Um, it is Saturday the 18th, otherwise called Blur's Day because the days have all kind of just blurred together here. 2020, we're in the middle hopefully not, well, actually, hopefully closer to the end, but I doubt it, of the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever name you want to call it, pandemic, um, and social distancing, and lockdown, and all that, and everybody's going stir-crazy right now, some really crazy, stupid things going on, um, it's all, it's all for a good reason that we're staying apart from each other, because when we get together, we spread disease, <laughs> and this is a disease we don't want to be spreading because <clears throat> some of us might not survive it. Um, who knows? But I'm going to go do some social distancing by metal detecting again today. Of course, we can't go door knocking. Um, I suppose I could. I mean, I've got a few friends I know where I could say, hey, if you stay inside your house, can I come metal detect your yard? But I don't, I don't really feel comfortable with doing that and asking people to do that. So, we're, a lot of the metal detectors like me are hitting up old places we've been to and pounded to death before. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, um, some of it's really paid off well. So, I'm going to go to another place today. It's an old school that has a football and sports field kind of thing on it. Um, it's been hit before. Other people have detected it. I have as well. But I found some interesting things from, you know, silver coins to play money and things like that. Uh, there's one section across the street from uh, one end zone of the field is a power substation. So when you get over there, your metal detector gets really chatty. I'm going to try to go single frequency toward that end and hit that end up a little bit better because n I don't think anybody really has. I'm going to see if I get lucky over there. Um, so, you know, maybe we can make a day out of it and uh, see what happens. Let's go find out and see if we can save some history. Wow, pickings have been really slim. I don't have my watch on. I didn't look at my phone to see what time it was. Um, it is muddy. My gloves are soaked. It's actually nice to take my hands out of my gloves for a second to let them dry off. You can see my fingers are even starting to prune just a tad. Not a lot. My shovel is cold. It is warming up finally, though. As long as the wind doesn't start kicking in. I really haven't found anything worth looking at. A few quarters and stuff like that. But I got something here. I'm not sure what it is. I think it may be just a game token or something. But first interesting thing we found. So let's take a look together and see what it is. That's it right there. Starland. It's a or Star World, Star World Amusement. So it's a game token. To uh an arcade. I don't even know if we have a Star World anymore. This is pretty deep. I don't think so. But hey, that's something to start the day. I left my vest at home with my fines pouch, my foo foo juice and everything, so I'm going to old school and going back to my Garrett pouch. <laughs> so, at least for the for the time being, we'll we'll take it. I thought this was just too cute not to share. <laughs> yeah, I know a bottle cap. You're thinking a a beer can, a beer bottle cap, but check out the kind. <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> that's just too crazy. I, I thought that was funny. Anyway back to the show. Alrighty, so here's the scoop. 
Um, it's the afternoon now. I had to, uh, I took a break. I had some lunch. I had to wash everything. It was a muddy mess this morning. Uh, I let everything melt off. It's like 56 right now, so hopefully the grass is dry. There's a, a nice little breeze blowing, so hopefully it dried off the grass and everything. So I can dig without being quite so bad. It wouldn't be so bad, but when the grass itself is wet, everything gets wet, so the dirt you touch turns into mud and all that. So we had to give it a break. Didn't get really anything that interesting at the other location, so we're trying another spot. And uh, we'll see what happens. All we can do is try. This was kind of hidden. It was way down there. I got my hand way down there. Because um, there was some nails and stuff in here. But I might have a little piece of silver. Uh, maybe not. It could be aluminum. I don't know. That's, look how clean that's coming. It's a tiny little thing. It's gorgeous. Let me get a brush on this real quick and see what we've got. That's kind of cool. It's very tiny. It's definitely a kid's ring. Hang on just a sec. Let me brush it up. Well, it's really pretty, but the jury is out on it. Check the break on it there. Hmm. I don't know. We'll set aside. We'll take a look later. I hope it's I hope it's got some silver because it sure is pretty. All right, we got us a green coin. Ooh, nice little piece there. Has a possibility of being a wheat penny, and if so, would be the first one of the day. Slick Rick is what it is. I think some wheat's coming through there, though. Yep, let me clean her up just a little bit. Actually, right there. Uh, I think I got something peeking through. I can't tell what it is. Let me clean it up just a little bit more. Yep, it is indeed a wheat penny, and it looks like we got a 44 wheat penny. So, first wheat penny of the day day wow it's been a long time coming alrighty not five minutes later and I've got another one making up for lost time and it's another 1944 I believe yeah it is that is odd 244s you know what I will take odd right now though and I think we might have another that definitely looks like the back for a wheat penny, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Ooh, that front's a little toasty. Crunchy. Right down there should be a date. Let me see if I can get one real quick. I do believe I managed to get one out. A 36 it looks like. It's a crunchy one, but... We got her. Okay, so this is a thing. I don't know what kind of thing. <laughs> really, I don't. I don't know if this is stainless steel, silver, or what. It's got some weight to it. I have no idea what the heck this is. Squished, I think. I got this down. You can see the hole there. It was pretty deep, eight inches at least. No, parts are flaking off right there, so I don't think that's a good sign. If it's silver, it's plated. Yeah, there's more coming off right there. And the way that looks right there. I don't know what this is. It was awfully deep, though. It'll clean her up better when we get home. Alrighty, this one was pinpointer deep, you can see. I mean, like, right even with the ground. It's over here. Bet it's just another wheat penny. Yeah, I can see the one cent sticking out in the back. Let's see if the front looks halfway decent. Ooh, that one's just going to be an old one. Oh, and it's going to clean up nice too. Look at that. 1914. 
nice and it's going to be pretty. I will definitely take that. We're almost back in the range of the Indian head, so maybe I'll get lucky. Another one. This one wasn't too deep, and it's a pretty one. Can't see the date. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's a baby. 50... 53? That's not too baby. It wasn't very deep either. Uh, no, it's not too bad. Four or five inches, I guess. Getting tired, though. It's six o'clock. I'm going to have to uh, wrap it up here soon. Look at that little bit of sunshine trying to peek through. It's supposed to rain maybe later today. Not sure, but I'm out at the Field of Dreams this morning. And uh, I think I just got myself something special. It's not silver, but I will take it. It's, oh, it's just as good. <laughs> Check this out. Look at that. Can you see the wreath on it? I do believe I got an IHP. And it wasn't that deep either, probably no more than six or seven inches. That does look like an IHP, doesn't it? Let's see if we can get this side cleaned. Wow, that, that side's a little crusty. Let's see if I can get some of that crust off. Let me uh, let me get a fingernail on this real quick and uh, get right back at you. Check her out. I think that says 1866, doesn't it? Might say 86. I have to get a toothpick on it and clean it up a little bit better, but I'll take that. That's a that's a nice find for the weekend. Definitely love me a IHP. Heck yeah. That makes the morning worthwhile. My hair's getting messed up, isn't it? <laughs> That's all right. You know, um, this was different. I flipped my plug open. The dirt's really loose and it just kind of fell apart when it fell off. And I must have pinpointed fairly closely what was in the hole because it fell off to the side. And after IHP, I think I dug some garbage. And this is the next hole after that, maybe two more. And I think I got silver. See, there's my clump. It just kind of fell apart. This was here, and it just went whop like that. And that fell out off to the side. I think I got myself a Merc. I do. I got myself a Mercury Dime. Let's see. If I can figure out how to get my water bottle out here. While you look at my pretty Merc, there we go. Nineteen forty. That's what it looks like. We will go with that. I'll take a Merc dime any day. So we got silver and an IHP for the day. Field of dreams, I tell you, it always produces. I think this might be the last hole. This one was down there a ways. Uh, what is that? About seven and a half inches. Orange. And it's just a dime. What model have we got? It's a 70s model. But I think that might be the last hole of the day. I am getting hot because I got a jacket on and I need to go get this thing taken off. So there you guys have it. Here we are at uh, a couple days from the weekend. It's Tuesday. And um, I have to say I am pretty happy with the way the weekend turned out. Um, here in this coronavirus shutdown, um, metal detectorists have had to get creative, at least in the areas that have been shut down and have restrictions because of the number of... Um, well, basically because of the number of people dying um, and because we don't want to spread that and you know increase those numbers um, but we've had to get creative in being able to metal detect um, certain areas where people gather are shut down like parks and things in the area that I'm in um, I, you don't want to go door knocking it's just you know it's not the not the right time to do that um, so you have to get creative and I've gone back to some areas that I've pounded to death 
and um, just continue to find stuff. Um, in the Equinox, since I've had good luck in areas with high EMI running 10 kilohertz, um, I have tried a lot of these areas that I've gone back to. I'm like, well, you know if it works there, let's try it here. Let's run 10 kilohertz. Let's see what happens. And um, I tell you what, it's done pretty darn good. I'm really impressed. Guys, if you've not tried the Equinox in 10 kilohertz mode, go back over an area that you've pounded before, try it, see what happens. You've got to take your time, swing. What The way I uh, have mine set up, I'm in Park 1. I changed it to 50 tones. I have auto ground balance. Um, I have my um, sensitivity set as high as I can get it. I usually run 22, 23. Um, and my, I don't think you can do uh, iron bias, but you can do your uh, swing speed, your um, recovery speed. And I have that down around five. So you do have to be a little bit slower, steadier, more purposeful. And with the 10 kilohertz, you're going to have some of that iron falsing too, but not as bad as you think you would. A lot of time, if you do it one way and then turn 90 degrees to that, that signal will disappear. If the numbers are jumping up around 26, 27 plus, I might dig it anyway. I've dug a lot of nails that way, and that's just the nature of the beast. You're going to dig a lot of junk. But at the same time, I've come away with some really interesting stuff. Some of these nail signals that I thought like that have been interesting things like pocket knife parts and, and interesting other little tidbits that have been exactly the kind of thing you go out looking for when you're metal detecting and trying to find pieces of history along with coins and stuff like that. So don't be afraid to play around with it. And if you've got certain settings that you have tried and had interesting luck with, that other people don't seem to be using, try it. Now, am I going to go away from multi-frequency? No. But I know that if I go over an area in multi-frequency, it's worth going back over it in single frequency because single frequency sometimes will specialize in certain types of objects. Uh, and your lower frequencies like that key in, it seems like, on your silver and your copper stuff, which is a lot of U.S. coins. So it's helpful trying to recover things like that, and it's benefited me well. So anyway, I'm rambling now, aren't I? So let's go show you all the cool stuff I got from the weekend. Guys, that is it. That's the paper towel of shame. Um, of course, I got all my junk pieces. This is just some of the stuff that sounded really good. An aluminum nail. Uh, not why sure what that's about. Got a couple of golf tees in a field I was in. Old style pull tab. That is cool. Still evil, but nonetheless cool. I like that. I think I might actually keep that. Uh, it's in such good shape. Um, I, I'm half tempted to see if I can get some of that stuff that you do gold gilting with and make a necklace out of it or something. I just, you don't see those these days. Of course, I got my obligatory Zinkins, some clad, a couple of old shotgun shell head stamps in places I wouldn't have expected. One was a school, one was a church. Um, so it goes back to the time periods before those were settled. Um, got the one pocket knife piece I showed you there. That's kind of cool. I like the end of this, the way this uh, comes out and makes the circle. I wish I knew who made that. Um, you got this. This is cool. It says, <laughs> you can see the, just a little bit of rust and dirt still in there. Office knife. This was actually made by Winchester, is what I'm finding out. Uh, most likely made uh, in the 50s. And that's not bone. It's made to look like bone, but those are actually celluloid scales. So that's old-fashioned old celluloid, which I think is cool. I don't know what the heck this is. It's... um. It's light. Uh, it may just be junk, but uh, it's really interested the way it's everything's all crusted up to it. As it rusted, it encased all the the rocks and things and pebbles that were around it. It's really interesting the way that happened. I'm not keeping it, but still interested. Got my Star World amusement. That is junk right there. Um, that. Um, Canadian 
um, dime there. It just has a really cool patina. I found another Canadian right there. Can't get a date off of it because, as you can see, that sucker has a lot of crust on it. I tried using the aluminum nail that I have up there to get it off, and it won't come off. That is cool. This little ring right here did end up being sterling. It says sterling MH inside. And I think the stone is cubic zirconium. Um, the MH is McGrath and Hammond. Uh, and the ring was made in the 50s. That is a tiny little thing to look out. I mean, look at that. It, it barely fits my fingernail, much less my finger. So that, of course, was a child's ring. And that's, I love that stuff. That's something you do not find anymore. Because, unfortunately, kids these days just don't appreciate stuff like that, unfortunately. Now, I'm being generalist there. Some kids do. But a lot just don't. Because something like that has no value anymore. And I think that's a bit sad. Um, these coins just wanted to be old, but weren't... Well, 41's old, but it's not interesting. This is the stuff that I did come away with that's interesting. Of course, I got my wheats, but I got wheats ranging from 1914 on up. I got pairs of 44s and 53Ds. Um, I got that 1940S Merc. You guys saw that. And what you didn't see was this. You did see this one, I do believe. Uh, the 1866 IHP, because I wasn't sure whether it was a 86 or a 66. But I went back Monday, just yesterday, to an old church that I have permission to detect. For about two hours, it was windy as all get out. And um, didn't come away with much of anything interesting, because this is another place I have pounded to death. But it paid off. I got me an 1865 Indian head penny. And in this area of the country, um, you know, that's awesome. I don't get to find a huge amount of Indian head pennies. So I absolutely love to find Indian head pennies. To me, that's like the Hoover boys finding a copper. Um, you know, to them, they, they're in an area where you're going to find a lot more of that stuff than I am. I still love an Indian head penny, though. Um, I just do. <laughs> can't help myself. So anyways... That's it. Like I said, I think I did really stinking good. Um, I know I got out and got a lot of exercise because I slept like a baby and I was sore the next day and I got out and did it again. It's the end of winter and we've been locked up from COVID and I am drastically out of shape. So, Anyways, don't forget to subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Share so other people can see the channel. And uh, click that notification icon. I am creeping up on, I'm not too far over uh, 700 subscribers, but I'd like to push a little harder and I'd like to work toward getting 1,000 subscribers this year. It's April. I've got until December. That could happen. If you guys have recommendations for things that I could do to help push um, more content or more interesting content, let me know. I would love to hear from you guys and see what you want to see. Uh, I'm going to try to do some videos later. Um, some VDI videos. I'm going to go out and say, okay, the next 20 targets. I'm going to do like a 20 target video. The next 20 targets, I'm going to show you what the VDI numbers are and what they're telling me. And then we'll dig it up and see if I was right uh, sometime. If I can say, okay, if this is doing this, this way, and this, this way, this is a nail, and it's probably laying this way in the ground, that's why it's doing one thing one way and one the other way, we're going to dig it, and we're going to find out what, um, what it is, and if I was right. And hopefully that will help you guys as well. Um, I would love to find somebody that's got one of the um, Nocta Simplexes or the new Mind Lab um, Vanquish. Um, in the area here in West Michigan and go detecting with them. Maybe swap out. They can use my Equinox. I can use their uh, Nocta, something like that. That Simplex for the price, if it's as capable as people are saying it is, that has, that's an amazing machine. If, if it's got the discrim discrimination and the depth that um, it's being advertised as on the level of like the Vanquish or maybe 
getting you know coming up on the Equinox 600 um, type thing there, then um, good heavens for the price you cannot get a better metal detector. I would love to try one and find out. So um, if you guys know of anybody that would be willing to sponsor me and loan me one or give me one, I would I would uh, be willing to do a giveaway for it or whatever. Or just you're in the area and you're like, hey, I got one. I'll share it, brother. Come on. Let's go detecting. That's good too. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. And I uh, hope you're finding what you're looking for as well. And uh, see you next time.